everybody. Welcome back. Latest edition of the Colpack and Izzo podcast. Find them all at Inforum.com. With Jeff Colpack. I'm Dom Izzo. As we are on the eve of North Dakota State opening up football practice. Uh, on January 21st, <laughs> the Bison were a uh, day away from opening up the spring portion of the 2020 season. I don't how are you writing that, by the way? Was it, not, out? was it not lost on everybody yesterday that it was almost 40 degrees, Yeah, right. sunny, the streets are melting like I wrote in today's <laughs> E-Edition, and we're starting football season, and it's middle of January. So it's still the 2020 season. Is that how? I Technically. Mean, do you have, how are you referencing that? Like, for Have you figured that out for stories? I'm just going spring season. Okay. I'm just yeah. – because everybody knows – you know, 10 years from now, the spring season was in 21. There's only going to be one. Let's hope there's <laughs> right. only going to be one spring season. So, I mean, David Pollack wants it every yeah, year, right. apparently. He ain't getting that. Uh, we will, apparently, uh, <laughs> I know when we've done this, that sometimes our, our news is outdated by the end of the week. Might be at the end of the day, because uh, the Missouri Valley may today, or at least tomorrow, uh, put out the revised conference schedule. From what Matt Entz told us yesterday, this we know. that I asked him that the Bison are still going to play Youngstown State as the first game on February 21st, a Sunday, because of the state wrestling tournament being at the Dome that weekend. That's why the Bison will play Youngstown on a Sunday. And to review the reason they can do this with Indiana State opting out is there are 11 teams total in the, in the Missouri Valley Football Conference and eight games. So you have... Now 10 teams for eight games. So Western and Southern were off the schedule. So who's going to be you on? Ma- you imagine they're drawing one of those on, correct? That now everybody is going to play eight. Brock Spack came out. I'm not, I know you were gone Are last we week. going to Macomb? <laughs> because this is going to be a road game, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine that's the that's the case on how this is going to uh, work out. Spack said last week that they'd be okay playing seven, but the league... President Smet and athletic director said, no, we're going to try and play the full eight. I did hear, uh, Colpac, that they are going to put the last week as the makeup week. So the games that would be April 17th, that will be a buy for everybody if they have to make something up there. It's almost like a storm day for school, yeah, correct? If, yeah. if something happens yep. during the year with uh, the virus. And so that would eliminate NDSU's open date correct. after the 21st. Because it was going to be the 27th. I'm so that... glad I wasn't going to go on the ski trip. I, <laughs> it's usually the 28th. It's usually that week. And I thought, ah, uh, you know, I, I might go. I might not. You never know what's going to happen. And I was right. You never know what's going to happen. The Big Sky is the same schedule where they set aside that final week right before the, the FCS playoffs are uh, are set to begin. I Here we are now on the doorstep of this happening. I'm, I'm not convinced that everybody is going to – I mean, I – if they get six games in, I'm talking NDSU, I think they'd be happy. Regular season games. So hold on here now. You're not convinced everybody is not going to finish. Finish. But they're going to start it now. Yep. No more opt outs at this at point. At least out of the Valley, no. I think there are more FCS ones coming. The California schools, everybody's curious about that in the big sky. Davis, Cal Poly, yeah, Cal Dave, Davis. Dave, Davis, especially because their county, they're not allowing any travel for any of their athletic teams or practice. So I can't, I don't know what they're waiting on. On why they haven't announced on on what's going on on that front, so uh, we'll be there are more coming, I imagine. But I think the valley to my my point, everybody will start. I'm not sure how many are going to finish. That was Patty Viverito's message, actually, dating back to last August when we talked to her, and she said, and this is when the season was still slated to go in the fall, that she said, I think everybody's going to start. Right. I don't know if everybody's going to finish, and you're saying that still applies. I think so. I think uh, we look at the big boy division. I mean, Herb Street took a ton of flack over the Michigan Ohio State comments that he said. Well, I'm not sure if Michigan will want to play. They're not having a great season. If they got COVID, maybe they'll just won't play. Now he retracted that, and then what ended up happening? Michigan didn't play that game because they had uh, an outbreak of COVID on the roster. I'm just saying, if there's a team that's one in five. What's their incentive to come to Fargo and maybe get their, their brains beaten in uh, and just say, you know what, we'll we'll see you in the fall? So you say they would, on that Monday, at 1-5, and five, shut her down in favor of getting and focusing on the fall season. Maybe. And just say, you know what, let's rest up, heal up, and we'll see you in Boy, August. Boy, that's... I know, You're man. addressing a, a ticket-buying public. You're addressing... A lot of things, Dom. Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not saying it's Peer right. Peer competition. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying 
It's. I think it's reality. I think it's going to happen. I hope I'm wrong. Believe who's me. who's toward the end of the season? Let's let's go through a scenario well, here. <laughs> the original schedule because it's going to get blown up. I'll just what? throw a team out there. Uh, well, UND is at the back end. Uh, no, actually, they're early on. Let me see here. No, UND is the last. Okay, game. You, you think UND would do that? No. No. South Dakota State, Northern Iowa, and UND are the last three games on the schedule. I don't right think now. any of those would do it. I don't think so either. But if you're saying if the revised schedule and there's a Missouri Let's State, say Missouri State is scheduled for end of April, middle of April. When's the end of the season? April seventeenth is the last. Right. But I, they're not going to play that weekend, so it looks like April tenth would be the last game of the regular season. And on that Monday. They announced that they are no longer coming to Gate City Bank at the Fargo Dome. That's a that's another part. Let's say if they lose a home game, that's a huge obviously right financial hit. If it's a road game, I don't think the Bison are going to sweat. I don't too think much. that would resonate well within the halls of the Missouri Valley Presidents Council. It would not. I, it, I'm not arguing that. I these, don't think these, it would these either. programs are trying to survive, and everybody knows it. And what if the shoe were in the other foot, Missouri say, or whoever? Yep, whoever. Jimmy Shimtree University. <laughs> <laughs> I I hope I'm wrong that would, on that. That would be low. I think that, I agree. that that would just be low. But I it may not happen in this league. I wouldn't be surprised if it happens in another one if it's the SoCon, I'd say, okay, the, the Southland, wherever. Write us a check. Is there any guarantees? <laughs> <laughs> right? It'd be really fascinating to see. So we anticipate a new revised schedule coming out. I mean, today if you make the commitment, make the commitment. That's I'm with a, you. That's the very essence yep. of athletics. Yep. Are you in or are you out? Right. And that was what the phone call was last week right. after Indiana State pulled out. I'm guessing that the ADs all got together in the call and said, "All right, are you in? Are you really right. in? Because right. let us know now. Because if not, then we're we're moving forward one way or the other. So you've had your chance to say you're not, and I don't. I just don't think anybody would do that. If they did that'd be really low. So they the the valley had its meeting on Wednesday. Then Friday news comes out from the Montana schools, and you asked Matt Entz about this yesterday, and I thought his answer was illuminating, where he said, uh, "Lad, uh, two Wednesdays ago they had their big AFCA FCS coaches meeting, and of the 120." That are supposed to be there. Half, half Cole Pack, half of them were on. So we've only heard from 27 that have opted out of the spring. So that means another 30 we haven't heard from that have either, like Matt said, washed their hands of of playing in the spring. Yeah, that was very interesting, very revealing of of the nationwide scope. But again, I go back to this is January 21st. The season practice starts tomorrow. tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, there, there are more teams coming. The Montana one, I think, is... I'm Mon- not surprised by the Montanas, and here's why. You could say that it's a variety of reasons, and I agree it's a variety of reasons, but there is no question in my mind that if they had indoor facilities, oh, yeah, they would going. be playing. Yep, absolutely. And that, But that was something remember, we brought up early on in this. Like, it's not new information no. on that. Well, I don't know why the delay. Is it because they were worried they were going to lose recruits? They were going to lose players on their own teams? Were they hoping global warming would would have (laughs) some sort of huge January melt? That had to have been it. They were worried they were going to lose players off their team to go into the portal and find somewhere else to play. It has to be it. That they were thinking, okay, if we say in, like when Sacramento State did, whatever it was, September or October, we're not playing. They lost their quarterback. Thompson uh, opted to the But he opted out long before they opted out. Well, I can't remember. I know they lost him. I don't know if that it was, was directly, last spring, Dom. If it was, was it that early? Yeah. If it was directly related to that, but he was long gone. I would think that that's probably quite a bit of why the reason why they waited so long. And I don't blame the Montanas. I've been out to Mont. I've been, I've been there in, in in February. It's not nice, right? For football, no. I mean, it's beautiful for other Skiing, things. Skiing, it ain't, ain't going to work for but football. Outdoor practice. And like we were talking yesterday uh, during uh, at the uh, the Shack Media Room between a lot of us, it's dangerous if you don't have the facilities to practice properly and then go into a game that untested right. that you haven't blocked and tackled on a field of play. That's just dangerous. And that's why they didn't want to take that chance. So Portland I get that. states in that. I'm mix not blaming as well. them. I'm no, not blaming them. Not one bit. Maybe the, the, the timing of the decision. The timing stinks. I'd say uh, on that front. So. We'll uh, we'll keep monitoring that. Now, on the Bison side of things, we got an updated depth chart from Matt Entz yesterday on where things stand uh, for this spring season. And obviously, offensive line was going to draw our attention with the guys that decided to uh, move on. I'm 
looking right at Carson Shooting, the starting center, who uh, decided to not come back and move on with his life. And we have, for the Bison now, a new left tackle, a new center, and a new right tackle. So tell me where you want to start here. Cordell Volson makes the most sense to me. I think we talked about this in the fall when we knew Raidens was going to move on, that that would make the most sense to move him from the right side to the left. I was curious if if uh, Cody Mock was going to move to the left side because Cordell's been at the right side and there's a comfort factor. But obviously, they did. you want your senior leader guy at left tackle. That's the blind side yep. guy. That's your dude. That's your Billy Turner. That's your Dilden Radens. You know, they've had a nice run of great left tackles. So it makes sense that you put your and, – and and by all accounts, Cordell volson has been one of the great team leaders yes. in this team so far. There's not many this year. Nine seniors. Man. Not many. But that makes sense. And I, you got to start at the center. So Jalen Sundell moves into center. Now, this is a guy we've talked about quite a bit. Uh, super athletic. Made his way into the two deep a couple years ago. Connor Riley was super high on him uh, when Sundell uh, committed out of Maryville, Missouri. They originally had him at tackle, then moved him to guard. Now he's at center. I asked Entz about it specifically. He said the athleticism he has, this is the spot where we feel we can have him on the field. And he made it a point that he's a little more athletic than a lot of centers that they've had. And, oh, by the way, they've had Tanner Volson, who got an NFL shot. Shooning really came on last year. I thought he was the surprise of the team last year. I agree. Year, how good he yep. was. Uh, before, I mean, you go back go back to Hunt. I mean, they, they've had centers. I look at Joe Lund, who was really good. Uh, he was a, a yeah. A, he was a Remington, Remington Award. Award. Yep. I mean, uh, Jesse Hines, who came in for a year and played that position, was really good. I mean, they've been they've, – Josh Colville was in there for a bit at center. I mean, they've had, they've had some good guys at that spot. Sundell is an athletic freak. 6'5", 294. And he can move too. I'm curious how this is gonna how this will pan out for him at that spot. It's a changing of the guard this year in the offensive line. Not only has your coach moved on, and we can get that into yep. a second with AJ Blodja going to Wyoming, but it's a changing of the guard as far as the makeup of. Uh, it's almost like a mid major basketball team that graduates seniors and you sort of start over again. NDSU has been able to do that really well. So now you got a, a sort of a core of young kids coming up in the Sundell range. Who's a sophomore? And look is, at the backups. Now Zach yeah. Kubis is a senior. He's yep. been around a while. Yep, and he got moved to guard. Willis, Willis, is, we th- I thought Willis might have been the center, but now he's moved up to backup guard. Yep, to backup guard on that. Uh, and at right tackle is where Cody Malk is. And I know you've written a story, a couple of him on the Hankinson kid. What a wild ride for him to go from Hankinson High School to now he's moved all over the field. He scored a two point conversion in the semifinal win over Montana State. Uh now gonna be the starting right tackle for the Bison. God he looks good. I, I, I saw him at a wedding <laughs> over the holidays and man he just looks good. Yeah. He's just uh you know six five, two ninety five right now. And he doesn't look two ninety five. No. A lot of those guys, it's that lean muscle thing they got going on. You know, just the mass. They they don't care they don't look like they're you know, two, the 295 picture in the old days was big, fat, and yeah, just blubbery around. Guy. These guys look like no. they're 245 and can play tight end. So you mentioned youth part. So out, you take Volson and Zach Kubis out of the mix, right? After that, just addressing the whole depth chart, freshman, junior, redshirt freshman, sophomore, sophomore, junior, redshirt freshman. That is a lot of youth on that side of the uh, uh, that position group. Well, and what, 10 seniors, we think, moved on? 11, 11, 11 total. 11 yep. total yep. moved on. So, you know, a few walk-ons that you figured that you get it, right? You get everything. I mean, there's a, there's a timing factor. You move on. And get at married, some point, yep. you graduate. And it's time you to know go. What? School's expensive. Not everybody's on a full ride. In no. fact, there's probably not a lot, very few that are on a total full ride. Correct. So to, to fork over 10 grand, 15 grand, 20 grand to play a sport that – Maybe you're not guaranteed to play much. Right. Like, say, Quinalo from Lamore gave it his all yep. for, for the time he was here, but he was a walk on. He got married, time to move on. Totally get it. How about two freshmen that got here in June or on the depth chart hit on offensive line? Mason Miller, the kid from Ada, and the other one I know you know real well, in Gray Zabel, who's listed as the backup center from Pierre. That, that tells you all you need to know about how good they are. Again, can I be. thought he'd be a tackle, and they moved him to center. Yeah. That tells you all you need are to they know. Get, are, they, I mean, are they changing philosophy a little bit? Maybe. From, and that's something to, I guess we'll pursue thought, on that. I thought the ideal center was maybe 6'2", 6'3", 295. Zabel's now you're 6'5". Six, six, both of them are 6'5". Both Sundell and Zabel are both 6'5". That's huge at that spot. 
NDSU's never had a guy Not that, like that big uh, to play that position. So, speaking of offensive line, A.J. Blazik left to take the Wyoming job. Dan Larson uh, got promoted from running back coach uh, to offensive line. You asked Matt Entz about that because it's interesting because I think I know people brought this up to me last week that he doesn't have any offensive line yeah, what experience. Is it, what is it in his resume that has offensive line experience? Well, he has, this is his 18th year in the business, so it's not like he hasn't yep. been around much. And he's been a head coach, probably well-versed. And when you're a head coach, you're well-versed in techniques and a lot of things. And think about it, running backs, fullbacks. Fullbacks have to block, so you need to figure yep. that out. Um. You know, look at Tim Polisek. He was fullbacks, tight ends coach. Now he's the offensive line coach in the Big Ten yeah, at Iowa. Iowa. Right. Yep. I am. Uh, I'm and, curious. And, and to see how actually, this will work. let me complete this. And it's more than that. It's it's more. It's a job that the head coach needs somebody kn- that he knows trust. and can trust. Yep. You did, I'm sure he got and he told me there's a hundred people that applied, but you can't take say the old line coach from Liberty or something, and, and you don't know him. You don't know is he may have a reputation being really good, but in this system, you just can't bring somebody in yeah. and hope it'll work out. Th- it'll work yeah. out. So this was, I think, the easiest uh, um, adjustment as far as uh, uh, the program that Ants could go with. Joe Bashaner comes in and takes over as the running back coach. That's a familiar name for football fans in this part of the world, obviously from uh, their time in the North Central Conference. And Joe was the offensive coordinator at Mankato, for, a, and obviously the Mavericks made the 2019 Division II championship game. He knows what to do on offense. I think that'll be a good move there. NDSU has done well going into the Mankatos and Duluth. Yes. and Winona's, Boy, times you know. have changed since the Craig Bowl days when he'd hire – Every Division One yeah, retread, right. coming back and you're looking right. to start over, and I think that's really a factor that changed from the 2008, nine, seven those teams. This 2017 was really good. Then they had a fade. That you know what we need to change the the image and look mm-hmm. and, and recruiting of our team. Let's get a Nick Gazer from Duluth, and, and have him and get a guy who wants to prove himself. Yep. On his way up, instead of a guy who was is on starting his way down again. and starting yep, over. Yep. Uh, defensively wise, I got this tweeted at me, and I, I I hate the fact I didn't ask this yesterday. Uh, Barty Ogbu is not on the two deep here at defensive end. He's now granted he dealt well, with a ton done? of injuries. What has he done? But he played quite a bit against Central Arkansas. Uh, and that that's why I was a little surprised. Pierce and Wagey on one side with uh, McCormick and Cook on the other. I'm not arguing with any of those four. I think Pierce is a stud in the making. I was just a little surprised that uh, that Ogbu wasn't there, considering how much he did oh, play against he'll, UCA. He'll play. Yeah, I, there, you're, that was my next he'll point play. on that. But uh, I was I got tweeted that, and I was like, oh, that's well, a good question on that front. Eli is it most which most art is not Eli is the backup at. Uh, okay, where's at, Will? I mean, and Will will going to play too, a lot. Yeah, he's going to play a lot. Eli is make this easy for you, by the way. Will four letters is D end. Eli three letters D tackle. Does that make it easier well, for thank, you? That, to, thanks, doctor. I'm just saying to, to, spend, to break it up for you. Uh, the a story you uh, wrote as well that's uh, online now at Inforum.com basically means that the we you better get to know this entire roster because everybody looks like it's going to play in the spring. So the head coach asked me, I asked the question, he asked me if I have any eligibility. <laughs> you know what? I took that. I'm by far the most athletic of any media person in this <laughs> Of course in, 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 the, in the area. Anyway. Well, I looked around. I go, eh, yeah, eh, uh, I can see why he'd no, ask me. There's no doubt. Anyway, what do you make of this now? Oh, you have to. I mean, with 19 games minimum scheduled, and you got to assume maybe there's going to be playoffs in that, that you have to. There's no other way you can go about it. So I asked him the question, now, when you do this, yeah. there might be a give and take at the expense of performance game-wide, meaning – you can't play your three linebackers all game. If you did, you'd play. You'd probably be, be better, right? Right. If you played the same guy, they 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 rarely change up at linebacker no. and, and in the in defensive backfield. Now, if you're going to rotate more, you may not be as good. Performance may drop. Are you willing to make that sacrifice? Was my question. <laughs> and I asked it like an idiot. I, I couldn't really get out the words right. But I think he got my gist. Yeah. And he said that. Well, we develop. Yep. Yeah. And I get it. The old, the new line, by the way, is race to maturity. That's the new one. I'm not sure. Eighteen year olds can't play like yeah. eighteen year olds. I think I, I I appreciate your question and I understand it and I'm curious about that. 
I'm wondering how that's going to manifest itself on the field where – Say it's a tie a, game in the third quarter. Right. Are you going to throw in a true freshman? Well, we're going to find out. I think, <laughs> I think there, are, there are guys I know that Entz is confident in that could come in and play right away. Courtney Eubanks, kid who got here – was going to play in the fall anyway if they played in the fall. He's going to see time, and especially now with this not counting eligibility-wise, why not? Play them all. Let's see who can actually – we know we can count on Ooh, when the lights are bright. a 38-game winning streak on the line. I know. Oklahoma's in sight. I understand that, but I think it's got to be beyond beyond that to, it to does. prepare for the fall. I guess that's my point. To figure out what they actually have. Because at some spots, they don't know right now. Like <laughs> – you're going to roll your eyes at me, but the, the backups at linebacker, we don't, we don't know. know. We, we, frankly, we don't know the starters at linebacker. We saw one game for Jasir Cox. We saw one game for James Kayser. They were both very good, but that's one game. We got we need a little bit more resume there. Julian Wadarsik, we haven't seen him outside of special teams. I'm curious to see how he's going to play. Jaden Price is now the listing, listed as the starting cornerback. Over Talbert. One game we saw him play. Granny had a pick against Central Arkansas. I need to see more out of that. that we're, those are guys we're going to see play. Anthony Coleman yep. at corner. We're going to see all these guys that you see on signing day and then forget about for two, three years. No longer. There's no longer. You can't wait two, three years. Not this spring. I'm curious, too, on the amount of running backs they're going to play. You know, DJ Stewart, is he finally going to get his I was time? a running back, by the way. Where are you now? Yeah. You know, but now with Cofield gone and Sabian Clark gone, boy, now those two other true freshmen that came in, they Marshall and Ganella, are going to have to take some reps, and maybe on a third and three late in the third quarter, to your point. And my man, the bus. Jalen Bussey will definitely play. Kobe Johnson obviously will play. And obviously, Seth Wilson is going to have to DJ stay on the Stewart. field. Yeah, right. All those guys are going to have to. Did you say DJ I did. Okay, yeah, sorry. They're all going to have to stay on the field. And that will be really intriguing to see how this uh, this plays out. As we mentioned, practice begins um, tomorrow for NDSU football. We'll uh, shift gears here quickly to basketball before we wrap. Bison are home this weekend for Denver. The NDSU women swept uh, UND. The Bison men split. I uh, My commentary last night was to... A little late. What about on the Bison women's band, bandwagon? Yeah, where, where have you been? I don't know. I've been in here. I'm just saying for some fans. To, if Well, I'm saying that the bandwagon still- is filling up. Right now, I think on the on the women's side, don't you think? Well, they beat Kansas. Yeah, where, where, where was this commentary last <laughs> month? My God! So what do you? My do you point do you, was, they're still they haven't played South Dakota or South Dakota State, so we still don't know how good they are. It's one thing to beat UND or Western Illinois, and they'll probably cream Denver this weekend. It's another thing about those two schools. Well, of course it is, and that's what we've been saying in the beginning of the year, in year two of the Jerry Collins regime. But man, the guy has got it going. He's just a he's a solid coach. Mm-hmm. He knows how to coach. And we said it before. Hire I, I was tired of these D1's assistants coming in who, had, who hadn't called a timeout. Much out. to your point to the football aspect. Not right. necessarily retreads, but in that same vein. But he's brought in some talent. He can identify talent. He can recruit talent. That's something we haven't seen in 10, 11, 12 years. Your commentary goes back to Lisa Bue. I did. I went, well, I'm thinking of the players that She's they... got like nine kids now. <laughs> I'm looking. Heaven Hamling is a a player they haven't had since her time no. there. They no. just haven't. No, certainly not a shooter, playmaker. and Somebody just knows how to play the game. And can take over at the end. She took that shot thinking, I can make this shot and win the game. And they have depth. I mean, losing Marie Olsen. That's tough. Hurt. Yep. She was, you know, she's a player who needed some time to adjust. Maybe she was coming on, but now she has an ACL. But now they have other players. Hopkins has really impressed me. Renea Hopkins, another uh, JUCO transfer. She's a better come up. shooter. She's, than she's I been good. Deaton now eligible adds another adds some length to that team. Uh, and I, I like Abby Schulte, the true freshman. I, do too. I think she's going to be really good in a couple of years. She might. She's good now. I think she's going to be really good. And don't down forget, the road. this is a free year. Correct. All these players are coming back. So, Heaven Hamling... Have you gonna... found out about Dietz, by the way? Do you think she's going to come back? She hasn't said. I'm curious on that. She's been here for a bit. I wonder if she'll want to move on or not. Sorry, anyway. You know, winning, winning has a habit of... Then that's of... the thing. She's been through so much losing. I'm curious if she wanted to come back and do it again. Anyway, you're saying about Heaven well, Hamling. Well, she's going to be here so long that her sister is a sophomore <laughs> in high school. Yes. They're going to play together. Yes. That was, an, I think, a reason why her she'll sister her... wanted to come. I wonder what's going to happen to the record books. How do, you, how do you address the record books? Do you throw this year out? 
No, and everything counts. Everything counts here. It's so. going to be like Roger Maris asterisk city. <laughs> uh, on the men's side, they lost that Saturday game at UND. Uh, first conference loss. Now they get set for uh, Denver. I got to just say something about Rocky Cruiser, who was always the third guy. It was Shahid. It was Tyson Ward. And then it was Cruiser. Cruiser is the dude now, and it was evident in that game Saturday night. He took over that game Saturday he's night. He's able to Force. create more this yeah. year, and that's harder. It's he's six ten. He's he's gotten a little more athletic, I think, and able to separate a little bit better than he has in the past. Now nobody's like Shahid in separation nope. mode, but uh, Cruiser's um, and he, he's brought that senior itis kind of thing. Not itis, but senior. Uh, senior itis is bad, <laughs> but he's brought that senior, um, just that stability, I mm-hmm. guess, to this team that needed stability. You visited with Tyree Eady for a story that I know that just yes. uh, dropped it in for him, uh, obviously about uh, the Walk With Us shirts. I, I want to get to that in a second, but his play, his fan base is growing by the, the minute that people love what his tenacity that he brings to the floor. On Look out for Grant Larson. Oh, uh, Nelson, you mean? Or Nelson. Yeah. Say Larson. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think he's that piece since Christmas that he's been more aggressive. I think that's been the difference, mm. to put it on a true freshman like that, but that's true. And he's stepped up so far. He's steady. Edie, Tyree's been he, – he's a steady guy. He's he's 6'5". You can count on his production every night. But you need that these other pieces to come together. Cook's been good, too. Cook, that, now, Cook, that's a prospect. He's been a better shooter than I yes, thought, too. And when – they got him. Northern Iowa offered. Remember, we both did stories on that. That was a high-profile recruit that Dave Richmond got, and that is now panned out where he can he can fill it up. I want to go back to Tyree. He did. Uh, you did the story on the the walk with us shirts. Give us not the whole story, but a little background on how that came about. Yes, he. Uh, well, the, you know, in the in the campaign of <clears throat> of social justice, unity, and and everything that athletes have been really preaching on this year more than ever before. He took it upon himself to write the text for the Walk With Us campaign. And as a writer, I looked at that and I said, you know, that's really good. Mm -hmm. He's an exercise science major. And I asked him, I go, you know, have you always been able to write like this? Where did this come from? He goes, well, it's kind of been a hobby. I go, you might want to add this, you know, to your major. But it, it came from his experience growing up in Middleton, Wisconsin, right outside of Madison, came from his time at NDSU. And he put those words together in two hours. Wow. It's pretty good it's stuff. Pretty, it's pretty yeah, good. really that, impressive. That, that's a pretty – and those of us who write – I've been doing this for 30-some years, and I write fast, but I've been doing it for 30-some years. I'm not a college student. So for him to throw that together in two hours yeah. – and, and I, I'm writing information. I'm not writing thoughtful, uh, philosophical – Introspective stuff, right. Like that. Yeah. And that was really good. Yeah, it's uh, really impressive on that uh, on that front. So we'll look for Jeff's story uh, online. Before we go, uh, we have the NFC and AFC Championship games, and there's a ton of Bison connections this weekend. We've got the Bills, where the quarterback of the Bills was coached by former Bison coaches uh, Craig Bull and Brent Vegan and Josh Allen. You've got two coaches on the Bills staff, Bob Babich, former Bison coach, and his son Bobby, who played here, are the linebacker and the safeties coach. For Tampa Bay, you have All-American left tackle Joe Haig, who's now blocking for Tom Brady. And the Packers obviously have Zach Johnson, who's uh, on the practice squad, uh, another All-American, and Billy Turner, who will be blocking Aaron Rodgers' blind side for this NFC Championship game coming up on Sunday. Yesterday, Rodgers was asked about Turner. I didn't... This is really cool, actually. This is Aaron Rodgers talking about, uh, well, apparently he's known as Bill. According Bill. To Bill. I didn't, did you know that? <laughs> no, no. Listen to this. This is from A-Rod yesterday. And then we'll, we'll comment on it after. We're called Bill. Uh, it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty interesting. I think he's definitely one of the unsung heroes of the season for so many reasons. But last year, you know, he was playing right guard. And Billy is a... He's a he's a cut up dude, you know. He's a he's really well built, but he's not like a super heavy offensive lineman. He never has been, you know. He's not a three twenty three thirty guy. He carries his weight around three hundred, I believe. And he's just so strong and and great with his hands. But I'd heard he's you know he he kind of was a better tackle. You know, I was thinking, man, he played pretty damn good at right guard for us last year. But when we kicked him out, 
uh, to tackle men. He's had some incredible performances, in my opinion. I mean, going up against one of the best, if not the best, uh, edge rushers in the game in Khalil a couple times and played him really, really well. I mean, just watching those games back, what he did with his hands and, his, and variance in sets. Uh, just training tape and in, in mixing things up as a tackle. I thought it was just outstanding play. And then, you know, our all pro left tackle goes down and here's Billy who's, you know, working on the left foot forward, right foot back kick stance and playing so much for us. Oh, now, hey, by the way, buddy, you're going to have to go uh, play left tackle after you already played some right guard for us. Um, and he's just been such a solid, solid player. I think his attitude and his approach is very important. I think he would say this too, to his success. I mean, he is an extremely positive, interesting, thoughtful person uh, and also very, very sharp. Um, and I think all those things combined allow him to really have a calm peace of mind on the field. I mean, he's aggressive for sure and, and, uh, and a fantastic uh, physical player, but he has a great calm about him that I think all tackles, all great tackles we've had around here have. I mean, think about Cliffy and Tausch and, and Dave and Brian Balaga, very like calm presence. Last week. So how about that? From A Raj. First off, I, he said the Turner front would be called Bill. I've never called him that ever. I'm going to have to have to do that now next time I visit with him. I think he nailed Bill's <laughs> mentality right <laughs> on the bottom. Bill could do what Tyree did. Bill could yes. take a, a, a assignment and has and crank out a walk with us type thing yep. in two hours. Yep. He's that type of guy. He also described him before that uh, piece started as a mountain of a man, which is ironic considering that's his Twitter handle. I think it's still Big Mountain. Uh, we saw this early on. I mean, when Craig Bowl said to both of us, I'll never forget, he's going to be the starting. This was after the 10 sack debacle at Northern Iowa. He's going to be our starting left tackle. And that made a lot of sense. I've said and it he before. He never I left the lineup. I remember that first day of practice on Dakota Field, and I told Craig, oh, where did you get this guy? Yeah. Yep. How did you get this guy? <laughs> it's another good story. So well, the University of Brewster handed him to you. And now here he is blocking for Aaron Rodgers. And I mentioned this to Connor Riley earlier this week on my show. Think about that. The two, when Turner left, Haig moved in, and they didn't miss a beat at that spot. Haig goes on and wins back-to-back All-Americans, and he gets drafted into the NFL. It's remarkable. And, to wrap, and that's what we started our podcast with. They've had just great left tackles yeah. over the years. They're going to have another one, and Raiden's is going to get drafted yep. in a couple months here. That To think of that, though, that those two guys are blocking for arguably maybe the two best quarterbacks ever in Brady and Aaron Rodgers. I think we're going to hopefully have a great Super Bowl story from the fargo Morit area. Absolutely. Let's hope the uh, let's hope the Bills beat the Chiefs. Josh and Josh Allen, man, has been something else. And uh, visiting with Viggs last week, he was pretty pumped to see that that uh, that's turned out. Because I think, obviously, going back to that, he was getting all sorts of questions. I know we we talked to him about the comparisons with Wentz and and Allen, and boy, things have certainly worked out well on that front. All right, we got to roll. Lots to get to this weekend. You're covering hoops, I imagine, and some football. I'm covering hoops. I'm covering football. I'm covering volleyball, too. No, that's right. So here you go. Welcome to the gauntlet for the next little bit, right? Here we go. Uh, We'll have uh, volleyball, football, basketball all coming up over uh, the next couple days. And, of course, we'll be back next week, hopefully with a Missouri Valley Football Conference schedule that we can break down as well. Uh, For Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the Kolpak and Izzo podcast. We'll see you next time. 